hello everybody and finally we are getting to the last topic uh, of the course uh, you already heard that uh, mentioned many times and today we'll discuss about the react hooks uh, uh, which are a new uh, way of, uh, of constructing uh, some kind of functional components um, we uh, of course try to first understand what are the, the hooks uh, and try to uh, have more details uh, on the three most important ones uh, then there are other hooks available in the react library and uh, in other libraries that are um, coming out uh, um, as well as uh, the possibility of uh, of creating your own hooks okay uh, so we try to un understand the, the general uh, mechanisms uh, how they work uh, so that uh, you will later uh, be able also to understand and study on your own other types of hooks um, one thing that uh, should be mentioned in uh, right now is that uh, in, in, the, in your projects uh, you are free uh, to use hooks or not uh, depending on your preferences your, depending on your choices okay so that's why we'll have this uh, as the last topic which is a sort of a, an optional topic there's nothing that you can do with hooks uh, that you couldn't do with class components okay so it's a just different way of doing the same things uh, and it's up to you to decide which way to go and they are totally compatible with each other so you can mix uh, in the same react project uh, functional components functional components with hooks uh, and uh, uh, class uh, components so it's totally free okay uh, just to be clear okay um let's uh, uh, try to uh, understand uh, uh, the reason why uh, the react uh, team decided to to develop this new uh, uh, way of creating components uh, if uh, we compare classes and functions uh, uh, we already did uh, some kind of, of, um, of comparison when we introduced uh, the, um, the React components. Uh, uh, let, let's now revisit uh, this uh, uh, difference between classes and functions for creating uh, React components. So uh, we know that we can just use a function to create a React component. It's a very simple, it's just a rendering uh, function that uh, creates uh, uh, the JSX starting from some set of properties. Uh, and it has no state and no life cycle uh, to manage so that's very simple and the advantage uh, is a pure function so it's very easy to reuse um, we, you could define some functions uh, uh, nesting the definition of the function inside the function itself uh, but they are not very useful they're not very uh, used uh, because if you if you don't have any local state to manage uh, the handler functions actually are pretty useless and uh, uh, the important thing is that uh, since the function component is just a rendering function uh, no side effects are allowed okay so you cannot change anything in the state of the system you cannot do asynchronous calls or something like that um, class components are uh, are more complex are more complete also because you can do more actually with the, uh, with class components uh, uh but you need to be more aware of the complexity so having the constructor calling the super uh, remember to bind the, the functions uh, unless they are uh, arrow functions so there's a lot of more you know uh, syntax and, uh, and mechanisms that uh, uh, you have to get right uh, right but on the other hand uh, you have state so you can uh, finally uh, create stateful components you can you have life cycle methods so you, you can uh, load your data uh, register your uh, your handlers and so on in the in the right uh, places and then in the right moments of the life cycle of the of the method and that's why uh, you this you define a lot of functions inside the class component that will help uh, you and um, to manage uh, to handle all the events uh, that are happening um, of course uh, uh, side effects are not allowed in the render uh, function but they, they, they are allowed uh, elsewhere uh, for example in the function handler and the life cycle call methods and so on so this is the comparison that we have to, today um, the the question is uh, can we try to get the best uh, of both uh, uh, solutions uh, so uh, can we retain the simplicity and the ease of use of function components uh, uh, but overcome these limitations that there are no state no life cycle no side effects uh, uh, can we introduce uh, a notion of state and life cycle and side effects inst instead of a function components uh, uh, without going to the more complex solution so in function component yeah, uh, without going to the more complex solution which is uh, uh, represented by class components mm -hmm. 
that was the question uh, that the react designers uh, uh, were facing at the beginning and there are other goals uh, that were defined in when uh, when uh, they decided to create hooks uh, um, another goal uh, apart from the simplicity of uh, for adding functionality to simple functional components uh, is uh, uh, being able to reuse uh, uh, stateful logic so all this logic for managing a state usually is embedded inside the class component and you find that it's really bound to the component itself so if you have uh, two or three components that should manage similar actions like i don't know managing some form input and so on it's very difficult to reuse the code hmm? because the code is inside all the event tender that are in the side, in the defined inside the function and the event tender must be bound to the class so you cannot reuse the same event tender in a different class unless you do a double binding on the same function which is possible but again it is becomes complicated especially if classes are living uh, in uh, in different uh, in different components okay um so there are tricks uh, for doing that uh, like higher order components where a component uh, returns a new component that has been created or the render props when you are actually passing a function to do the rendering job and this function is free of course to call other common functions but they are uh, perceived as a extra complexity for a simple task so if, if i want to share a function a functionality between two components uh, uh, right now i don't have any easy way to do that and um, and finally uh, life cycle methods in some way are confusing not confusing means that i know i don't mean that they are difficult to understand but they are they tend to split the code into different parts uh, so the, the life cycle itself is something that you need to be aware of uh, and but then uh, when we add some code into the component the constructor for example you are loading some some data from outside so you must initialize the state uh, in the constructor and then update the state in component did mount and maybe also uh, free some resources in component will amount and so the same information i don't know i get a list from a rest api server uh, you need to uh, handle that in three different parts some two or three instructions in the constructor two or three instructions in the uh, by with the fetch in the component in mount and a couple of instructions in the um, unmount uh, life cycle method and uh, you find yourself that any uh, given functionality it, it tends to split the code into different life cycle methods and conversely the same uh, given life cycle method for example the constructor or the component did mount uh, contains uh, a mixture of different code with different purposes so there are very uh, low uh, coherence or cohesiveness uh, in, in, the, in this kind of classes because every method uh, is uh, dealing with one part of the functionality and all of this functionality is split uh, around so it gets uh, very, very for complex components uh, it gets very really difficult to to track what what you are really doing there is not a single place place where this functionality is uh, is, de is designed these are these were the three uh, say uh, guidance guidance uh, guiding principles uh, in the design of hooks and uh, uh, finally this uh, the, the uh, this proposal came out uh, in october uh, 2018 and if you have uh, uh, half an hour of time you can uh, have a look at this video which is really uh, very very clear uh, and it will give you a, a very hands-on comparison between uh, the what we can do with hooks and what we could do before with class components huh? you see a lot of publics that were enthusiastic because they they saw the potential for a great simplification uh, for now it's history uh, and so we don't, we are not so um, uh, so cheerful anymore for for this information but uh, actually it's very very clear and it was the uh, uh, video was presented by Dan Ambrovich uh, which was one of the creators of hooks uh, by itself and it took uh, nearly one year to become stable so since uh, react 16.8.0 which was delivered in february uh, 2019 the react team declared hooks to be stable and to be included by default uh, on in every um, hook uh, in every react uh, version from that moment on uh, actually they what they are what are they actually they are a set of functions of course it is javascript so so everything should be a function 
um, that are used uh, in function components to enable this functional component to access advanced features and uh, every hook is just a special function a special javascript function that is expected to be called with certain criteria that we'll see uh, in, inside function components and there are different different types of hooks uh, each uh, for uh, each type of different functionality that we want to add mm -hmm. and so uh, the combination of functional components plus uh, hooks uh, in many cases uh, may replace uh, class components okay so it's a, a different way of obtaining the same results uh, with function instead of classes and in a way they are built to be easy to compose uh, and to customize creating your own mm -hmm. so this is the, the design principles uh, in this lecture we we will uh, see the first three hooks uh, which are uh, use state use effect and use context uh, just to have a flavor of what is happening and also because uh, state and effects uh, are the two most uh, popular the most used context is easy and so we can uh, also have a look at that and uh, uh, but the, the list of uh, of the official uh, hooks in the react library is uh, completed by these ones uh, if you want uh, and maybe to have a look on your own uh, um, use memo could be very useful because it lets you uh, memorize and store the cache in a way the the result of a function to avoid recomputing the same values many many times uh, of course it's a, it's a performance optimization issue uh, which is not uh, uh, really essential from the functional point of view so uh, we will see uh, basically these three uh, hooks uh, first and then we'll try to understand a bit better how they work how they can possibly work uh, okay what is the mechanism and so what are the constraints uh, in, by which we can use them so let's start with the with the use state hook okay L like the name sta says uh, uh, use state enables uh, a function a functional component to have a state so right now the only way to have a state was to assign into this dot state in a class components uh, class component and now we are breaking this rule um, let's make the slide a bit larger so that we can comment the code use state uh, all the hooks all the hooks uh, have a name that starts with the use use something in this case use state uh, creates a new state variable um we see from the code here that uh, we are importing from react uh, the name use state uh, which is the function that we want to call and inside a functional component for example here we have a function that uh, is able to show a shortened version of the um, of the of the text uh, so if if it's too long uh, it will show the text truncated by with some points uh, uh, but then we have a more or less buttons that to show or hide uh, this kind of text uh, show the full version or show the shortened version so it's a normal stateful uh, operation so we have a hidden uh, state variable that can be set to false or true and of course depending on the value of the variable uh, the, the the interface the rendering will be different what is what we are doing here is that we are using the use state hook to create a new state variable this state variable is called hidden and uh, we are also defining a method uh, a callback a, fu a function to change the value of this uh, uh, variable okay so every time we call a use state uh, we are creating a new state variable associated with that function the new state variable will be uh, represented by two identifiers two variables the first one that will point to the value and the second that can be called to change the value itself uh, so yes you have this uh, use hook who creates you these two uh, items the current value and the function to update the state value and of course uh, the update value is i we can call them as we want but usually it's called set uh, and the number and the name of the of the state uh, behaves more like uh, more or less like the set state function in in classes uh, where you can pass uh, the new value or a callback function function that will compute the new value starting from the old one mm. so let's go into uh, so it's you see it's a function which very in a very uh, short uh, say in a very few lines uh, we, we were able to give the state to a function 
um, let's, let's analyze some more details okay so uh, this uh, instruction use state uh, creates a new state variable and it returns an array so we are using the array structure for uh, assigning two variables at once the first component is uh, the variable that points to the current value and the second is the value that points to a function that you may call whenever you want to update uh, this state and the use state is uh, one parameter which is the initial value of the variable so hidden will start out to be true it will be initialized to true and then it will change every time you call set hidden and uh, uh, you can create a variable of any type so that the, the variable can be a boolean can be a number can be a string it can be an object and the interesting part is that this uh, hidden variable is remembered across function calls this is strange it's a bit of magic that we'll um, analyze later on because you see this function creates a new scope and this is a local looks like a local variable in the function so you would imagine that every time you call this function you state will create a, a new variable here no it's not the case that's why uh, hooks uh, behave in a different way okay we'll see the details later for now we just uh, uh, can be sure that the uh, every time you call use state in a function it will return the same variable and remember its value and it will be only initialized at the first render of the function and later on it will just retain the previous value uh, the default value so it can only uh, inf influence the initial titan value and the variable name is a normal variable that can be used inside the function so you can modify the rendering according to this function uh, to this variable okay uh, normally you don't have to do anything special uh, while you want uh, if you want to change the variable you just call set hidden set state set name set whatever uh, function that we are you have uh, created here and that will change that specific uh, state value and normally if we are changing a state value uh, it will trigger a new re-render of the function so it will uh, of course uh, recall the function itself uh, for changing the rendering uh, like in the example that we had before i am making set hidden equal to false uh, when this set hidden is, uh, is, uh, is applied uh, false is a state variable and uh, changing the state will reschedule the rendering so the, the this function should will be called again with the new value of the state of course um, updating the state uh, uh, more or less the rules that we have are the same as uh, as with the um, uh, react class components uh, uh, you can set a, a state with a with a with a value and this value may depend on properties or maybe depend on uh, constant values may also depend on other state variables and in this case it will uh, uh, replace the current value uh, so we are setting the state variable to this constant whenever we need to uh, delay the execution the computation of this value for example when the new state depends on the old state this is uh, something that we already discussed in the set state with, with classes uh, it's the same idea here uh, the, the set function will receive a callback actually that will be called when the, the the function is ready and so we receive a copy of the old state um, um, with the fully updated so we don't risk of working with the stale state um, you see that uh, i wrote in bold here replace and replace uh, because one important difference is that uh, in hooks uh, the state is always replaced and not merged remember that this dot get state uh, was uh, working with the idea that all the state is packed into one single object okay and so uh, the set state will only replace some sub property of the state object and the state object will contain all of these properties with hooks uh, is uh, different because every hood will create only one variable and you are replacing that variable if you have a complex state you will create many state variables and you can update them independently from one each other uh, you can also reconstruct one big complex object uh, with the state hooks but uh, 
it would be running uh, swimming against the current uh, basically so uh, doing something for which this library was not uh, uh, initially thought uh, the first value, the default value, the initial or the initial value, uh, which is the argument of uh, use state, uh, is only used during the first render of the component. So the first time you render the component, uh, you are using this value, and it will never be used uh, later on. Basically, uh, you can also compute uh, the initial value from the props, uh, but be aware that if the properties change. Uh, uh, the, the initial value will not be updated no? for this is a consequence of the first rule so um, just be aware that uh, uh, you cannot expect that the default uh, uh, if the props change uh, the component is not destroyed and reconstructed and so you are, you are not creating a new default value but the component is just updated and updating will not reapply the default value to state uh, uh, variables okay so always be aware we also we already saw that in the exercises before with, with classes but the idea is the same uh, copying co properties into the state is uh, dangerous if you expect that the change in the property would change the state this doesn't happen it's only the initial value then the props may change but the state uh, will not be updated, updated automatically um, the in default value usually is a constant value, is an initialization value, but you can also pass a function to the use state um, uh, hook, um, and this uh, uh, will delay the construction of, of the state. Uh, this may happen, um, for example, if uh, the computing initial state is expensive, so you need to run a lot of code, you don't want to block uh, the first render of the function, so you you will uh, just render without initial state and then uh, asynchronously the, the function will call and will finally render the component mm -hmm. just for the initial the initial value okay um okay so uh, if we put everything together we have this uh, uh, possible comparison of the same identical functionality uh, described on the left hand side with the hooks syntax and the, on the right hand side with the class syntax for, that we are already familiar with i try to color in the same way the corresponding uh, objects so uh, in a way what we by for defining the state uh, in classes we use this dot state and assign something in the constructor and in this case inside the function you know the first difference is that this is a class and this is a function and for declaring a state we use uh, we call the use state function that will return us a value that we can refer by count or here we can refer by count so count in this case is a property of state and count in this case is just a free vari a free lo local variable inside the function uh, the initial value that we put here when we initialize the state uh, is here the argument of use state and uh, inside the code inside the render function we can use uh, freely the variable count here and in this case we also could do the same it was a bit longer because we had to write this dot state dot count hmm? because count is not a, an independent variable is a property or the state property of the object it's a bit longer but nothing which is uh, uh, very different and finally, when we wanted to change the state, uh, we had to call the this.setState function, uh, usually with a new value or with a callback. And uh, here we can do the same, but instead of having a generic set state that should receive an object uh, in which we define which property we want to update, well, right now we just call a set, the setter function, the set count here. And so it's implicit that we want to um, update uh, this kind of property mm. uh, so it's uh, it's much shorter it's much simpler from this point of view uh, to to replicate the same information mm. you don't have a lot of uh, bookkeeping uh, to to handle all this uh, state object and uh, if you extend that uh, to different state variables uh, uh, the the rule of the suggestion uh, in by using hooks is not using a single object for holding many properties like we were forced to do in classes because there was only one this dot state property and inside state uh, all the other properties should be 
uh, packed together uh, but creating as many state variables uh, as you need uh, so if i just put an example here where i'm creating different state variables each one with a variable name and with a set function uh, they will set independently that specific in the case of with a boolean and, and a number and a string uh, and then you can set all of them independently from each other okay uh, the state merging is not needed because every variable is independent and if any one of these variables will change of course the component will re-render hmm? uh, changing the state will for sure re-render this component and then only if the property will change also the children will, will, will be re-rendered but this is the, is, a, is the normal rule of rendering in, in, in React um, so it's a it's a bit different instead of having one state with many properties we have many single variables hmm? and each of them has its own private function to to update it apart from that uh, the concept of state and the rules for update initializing and updating the states uh, are, are exactly the same okay the same as with class components and we can also define some uh, event handlers in the functions to pass down as properties to our children and uh, our children we can pass for example the set count function to our children if we want the children to be able uh, to um, to modify the state okay uh, so it's, it's the same we can just define a function inside another function and pass it a pro as a property if we want our children to manipulate our state it's not different uh, from what we are already able to do with components uh, a second uh, simple uh, hook is the context hook um, and as the name says uh, we, uh, it can be used it will be used uh, uh, to access the context api so you remember uh, that we discussed uh, in some lectures ago with the life cycle also the context how to manage the context uh, in this in this class uh, and uh, mm, we just remind uh, very briefly what we learned we learn that in every time in react we can create a new context and uh, assign with a create context method the create context method will create a new object context object mm -hmm. a context object is an object that contains two components so this is an object uh, of type uh, context uh, that contains two sub objects of type uh, component react component mm -hmm. uh, one uh, property is the provider the component provider component and the second property is the consumer um, component and so when we wanted to use uh, this context we have first to provide a value by instantiating a provider for the context and then nested inside the provider we may have uh, some level some levels deeper inside the provider a consumer a uh, consumer is uh, just instantiating this component uh, with a callback function that will take the value and render some part of the page depending on, on the value itself so this is what we have already learned uh, um, about uh, the, the context API uh, what can we do with hooks uh, about the component when they, about the context actually uh, there is a hook uh, use context uh, here the use context hook uh, can be used to access a context as a consumer so the only thing you can do is to consume the context okay so uh, we are calling use context by passing as a parameter the context object so not the provider or the consumer directly the context the same object that was returned by the create context call and in this case we are uh, a value that is automatically assigned whenever the provider will change the value so uh, the value of this the actual value of this variable here will depend on the closest provider that set uh, a variable to the uh, a value to that variable okay so we still need uh, uh, a, a provider we still need uh, someone to create the context uh, so there is no way with hooks uh, to create a new context or to provide uh, a value to the context there's also this use context is also uh, able to is only able to um, consume the value 
inside a function. Well, that, that's the, the good part that inside a, a render function we can use a context without the need of, of wrapping the component into a consumer component and making the JXX more, more complex. And uh, especially if you have more than one, uh, if you have more than one uh, context provider, you can use them uh, freely at the, at the same time in the same function. So for example, imagine that we have to render a piece of text that depends on two different contexts. Uh, one is the user and the one, one is, is the notifications, the list of, notifi of the oh, pending notifications. They are maintained by two context objects uh, at the top level, for example. So in this same component, so the header bar of your website, uh, you need to access both, both information, both the user object and the notifications object. So you can just uh, call twice the hook and you will have a reference to the current value of the user current user context and a reference to the current value of the notifications context. And we and you can just freely use them inside your code. If you if we compare that with uh, the same version without using uh, um, hooks uh, uh, it, of course it can be done and it can also be done inside a function but uh, uh, the rendering will be much more complex so you see the block that we really want to render it is this one which is replicated here without hooks is the same the difference is that how we can provide the user and the notification object in this case we are just you know creating it with the use context hook and in the other cases, but with, without hooks, uh, we need to wrap our real code into a consumer for notification. And again, wrap everything, so nesting consumers inside consumers, uh, and each time we get a new value that we'll call a rendering function, that will nest a consumer, that we'll call a rendering function, that finally will render what we want, and we add all this nesting to provide the value as the argument or to the to the rendering function so uh, it's mm, you can do the it's the same uh, you, you achieve the same result uh, it's a bit more complex to write it's a uh, much more uh, verbose and difficult to read in, in a way okay um, but apart from that you have the same we have the same result so you can avoid create wrapping your components inside consumers inside many consumers and you can directly access the uh, the um, the context values and this was for uh, use context is quite is very simple because it only has one simple use case so um, now that we have uh, touched the the two easiest uh, and, uh, and uh, more common uh, um, um, hooks uh, let's dive into use effect uh, which is a bit more complex hmm? more complex but also more versatile from that point of view um, use effect it's a strange name what's an effect it's not a special effect effect is just a shortened version of of, uh, of side effects representing side effects uh, what we want to achieve is uh, uh, having side effects uh, into functional components what are side effects uh, well for example when we are fetching some data from uh, from a, a remote server when we are setting some subscription, some creating a new handler for a given event, uh, or removing uh, some handler or some subscription, when you are maybe manipulating something outside React, so we know that React uh, work, works with, with the functional propagation of values, but if we are interacting with some DOM component uh, that will not be managed by React, and you, we, you should do that uh, in, in a separate way. <coughs> So all of these uh, are called side effects, are uh, actions that modify uh, some value which is outside, outside the, con the direct control of, uh, of, um, of React. In, in a way, uh, use effect uh, is a hook that allows you to do the same operation that you would normally do in component did mount or in component did update or in component will unmount. Uh, so your question would be uh, how, how can it be possible because the mount and unmount will be, are the opposite operations how can a single hook uh, be able to manage uh, both use cases hmm? that's why use effect is a bit more complex huh? 
it's a uh, it's a bit uh, more en encrypted in a way there's it's a it's a, it has an api that i'm calling here uh, somewhat somewhat dense or more dense than the others so a uh, use effect uh, the hook uh, that uh, um, is called with two parameters hmm? and uh, does not return anything uh, useful use effect uh, return uh, receives one parameter which is a function a callback function that will do the work this function may have side effects uh, may change state may call external urls and so on um, this function not not use effect but uh, the fn function that we pass as a first parameter may return something or may return nothing if it returns nothing well okay if it returns something this something should be a function so use effect is a hook that receives a function this function may return a new function that is the so in, in a way we are setting up two callbacks with the same call one callback is the function fn that will be called every time we render the component and the second callback is the function which is, can be returned by fn and this function is remembered by the use effect hook and will be called when the component is uh, uh, will be unmounted will be deleted in a way so it's a sort of a cleanup function uh, we will go into more details about this uh, i i never understand why they they decided something so complex uh, where they could have put just an extra parameter them for uh, function one and function two but anyway this is the way it goes um, so this is the callback function that we want to call whenever we want to provide some side effect actually as we mentioned there is no one function but there are two functions hidden one inside the other uh, this function will will fire uh, after layout and paint uh, we will we'll, uh, have a, more, a bit more discussion that so it will fire later than what component mount uh, would uh, would fly, fire it so it was called component mount uh, uh um runs uh, after the virtual dom is computed but before the real dom is uh, is uh, is laid out uh, in this case it, it will happen a bit later okay and it's also better because uh, uh, if it happens later um, the user interface is already displayed so the computations inside the user effect hook uh, uh, callback function uh, does not slow the user interface because the interface is already uh, visualized and then you call the hook of course if this hook if this callback function um, modifies some state you will immediately re-render it of course hmm? and then we have the second parameter and no, an array an array that may be present or uh, missing so it's an optional array and depending on whether it's present or not uh, the function will do something different basically this array will control when the function is called the function might be called only once or may be called uh, uh, more than once uh, uh, or at, at every render or it may be called only when some variables change uh, if we don't specify the array so you leave if you leave it out uh, then the function will be called at every render so this function will be called always if but if i set a variable uh, an array sorry this array will list the variables uh, that uh, will be monitored by the hook and only if one or more of these variables that we list in, inside the array change then the function is changed and if you are re-rendering the component but this va this variable are not changing then the, the, the effect ho uh, hook is not called so it's a way of avoiding to call the function when uh, the changes that the component had because we are re-rendering so something changed but it was not something that was influencing that specific uh, function uh, we need some examples uh, or to be more concrete to understand it so basically to make it uh, very schematic uh, we have four ways to call the user effect hooks we we do we want to set uh, um, a callback uh, to run 
only once when the component mounts so like component did mount if we want to uh, use the function like this you can register the callback here by passing a, an empty array so this means an empty array means uh, I am telling you which are the variable variables uh, that will affect uh, the, the the calling of the other the function and so we are not in the default case of uh, call it always call it only when the variables listed in the array are changed okay but there are no variables listed in the array so this means uh, never call it never call the function because this function will be called only when these variables change there are no variables so the function is never called except except at the first render the first time of course we are calling the function at the first rendering so this uh, callback is called only once the first time this component is, this component is mounted and displayed and all the other renders this function will never be called anymore um, and if we want uh, to run a function when the component will unmount instead of mounting only running once when the component will unmount okay we use the fourth way here at the bottom we are returning so from the callback that is only called once at the beginning we are returning a value and this value is a function with another callback that uh, will uh, remove uh, or will uh, clean up uh, the code hmm. so usually we show we so we are calling this function once at mount time and we will be calling this function once at unmount time uh, the once is a consequence of these brackets so every time uh, uh, there's no dependency listed here uh, we are sure that it will be called only at the beginning and at the end of the life cycle of, of the component so these are the two ways of setting uh, an event um, an effect hook that creates some side effects at the beginning at mount time or at unmount time and then we have the other use cases uh, when we want to call the effect many times so uh, at every click for example or at every, every time uh, something changes uh, the easiest way is just to set uh, the, the callback function here and not provide any array Yeah, the second parameter you see here is missing and this is the default case where the, the, the callback is called every time a component is re-rendered every time um, otherwise if uh, this function uh, depends only on some variable so you may be in your component have four or five state variables and properties and but your comp your callback uh, only depends on one or two of them so it's a waste of time of recalling the the, the, the callback uh, if uh, the values that are used inside the callback uh, did not change the result will be the same no, it will not do anything more different from the other time so you can you can specify okay i want to um, call this method only if uh, this or that variable uh, uh, did change compared to the last time so this can be state variable names uh, can be functions can be properties all the variables that in some way are used inside the callback function if you are using them then you need to specify that whenever their value changes you want to recompute this function hmm? so in the in the worst case you could always recompute everything hmm? having nothing but uh, uh, it's better to be more precise and to list all your dependencies here just remember that if you forget a dependency here then there will be some cases where the component needs to be updated but it will not be that updated because the function didn't uh, uh, we will not be called because you didn't specify the, de the dependency so it's up to the programmer to uh, specify the right list of dependency uh, here <coughs> in order to be sure that the function is execu executed uh, uh, every time it's really needed and also the, the timing of when the effects uh, 
uh, function callbacks uh, are executed is a bit different uh, like, like we said uh, the function fires after layout and paint so after the render is already committed on the screen and it uh, runs during a, uh, like they call a deferred event so an event that is run asynchronously so the good part uh, the good news is that uh, the effect uh, callbacks uh, are not synchronous are not blocking the rendering in component did mount uh, we should be we had to be more careful and to do everything asynchronously because the the, the callback itself uh, was uh, was synchronous and here uh, we we don't need to, to to care okay of course it's it's always better not to uh, do excess compute uh, too much computation because it will slow down the, the application in general but at least it's not uh, uh, slowing down the user interface so the user will feel uh, that the interface is ready immediately even if the javascript is still computing something uh, it's guaranteed that this uh, deferred event will run before the next render so you you don't have the risk of overlapping some old modification coming from a previous side effect uh, after this the next uh, rendering phase that will make everything really unmanageable so it's a it's a bounded delay uh, you will process all the hooks uh, all the functions before doing the next render so if you are rendering something and then immediately after running or all, all the effects uh, and when the effects are over you can if if something has changed do a new render phase um, uh, uh, the cleanup function uh, is executed of course in a different time executed before the component is removed from a user interface uh, so usually um, you define define a cleanup function with an empty array saying okay don't run it uh, more than once only run it when the component is really going to be destroyed but uh, there's a useful functionality where uh, if you don't specify anything or you specify some dependencies the cleanup function will also be, be called uh, at every render or uh, uh, at every change of the variables and this can be useful because maybe you are setting some variable some some state for example and then if you change the state you, you must maybe uh, remove something and add something else hmm? you must uh, you know maybe you have highlighted some component you must remove the, the highlighting here before setting the highlighting there and okay this is, can be done just, with, just by changing the state but in general if you have some side effect uh, you want to remove some side effect here and start some side effect there so before calling the new effect you should remove the old one and this is useful uh, in, in this case the cleanup function will be called every time we are calling the uh, just before we will call the next uh, uh, the next function so uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a particular use case it's not very 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 common but in special cases it's, it's normal and it's useful that the cleanup function can be called many times so that in the function like here in the function we are registering something and in the cleanup we are removing that in this case we are just doing that once per the, per component on its life cycle but if we remove that we are we can uh, remove a previous listener and uh, add a new one every time so you don't have uh, uh, any let's say problem with uh, uh, leftover values that were uh, were applied to uh, to older values because you clean up before setting something new hmm? you delete from an array before adding a new element for example so there are special uh, use cases so that's why i called uh, this uh, um, api very dense because depending on very slight details are you returning a function or not are you passing a second argument or not and is the uh, the array uh, as a second argument uh, uh, does it contain something or not and what does it contain inside well the effect function will be called at different times uh, a different number of times and at different moments uh, uh, depending on of all these details mm -hmm. so we must uh, uh, these are the four main use cases that may be useful and so you are always better of thinking uh, as these cases as separate possibilities okay and these are all depend or they're all say generated starting from the same rule but uh, 
small changes in these rules uh, can change um, say, dr also dramatically on you know, the way uh, these are are, um, are used are, uh, have, uh, um, and uh, the results on your application and so we must al always be very very careful careful especially about the array hmm, because we really must include all the values uh, that the, the the function uses so you just really look at, at the code of your function if it's more than a couple of lines longer uh, and check all the variables that you're using inside them and put them into uh, into the array dependency array otherwise what happens is that uh, one variable that you depend on will change and the function will not be called and uh, if you are calling the function maybe the fu this function will use uh, older values because it, it wasn't aware of the change and so and you're passing these older values to your props to your children so when something changes you see that the interface is only updating partially or is updating in an inconsistent way and this can be because you forgot the dependencies dependency and you wanted to run um, you needed to run um, a side effect hook but you didn't specify the right dependencies so if you want you can always start safe by not providing any dependency don't provide the array and uh, uh, let let the hook run always and then you can add the dependencies when the code is uh, is finished and so when, when you're sure uh, of what are your variables because wh while you're developing maybe you have a first version of the hook that depends only on three variables one property and two states okay and then you modify the hook and you, you specify the dependencies then you modify the hook because 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 you need some maybe more functionality and you're using a second prop and you forget to add it to the array this is a common error so uh, the the real behavior of the function and the list of the dependencies uh, become misaligned uh, the other uh, risk is also um, taking care th that you are not creating an infinite loop because inside the uh, uh, user effect you can change the state and uh, if the state and if you are depending on the same state that you are changing the risk is that uh, you are changing a state triggering a rendering the rendering will call the function we see that the state has changed and so we we'll call the hook again the hook will change the state again the change of state will call the render the render will call the hook because the state has changed and so on and so you are uh, setting up an infinite loop so always be careful not to modify a state uh, from which you depend on or if you modify it do always it conditionally so maybe you are sure that you are modifying it once and then you stop and so you all will only re-render once instead of an infinite number of times so this is a, a, a small bug that may happen when using this effect and uh, uh, on the other hand uh, just try not to be lazy you know sometimes you say, okay let's put some square brackets because i'm lazy and then i will fill it later or I will leave it there because on, because I don't want to I want to my my component to run faster so I don't want to the hook to run uh, often but actually uh, it's easier the the, the, the the bad choice the safest choice is not to put the array at all the right choice of course is put the right variables there um, if you find that um, you are trying to save some computations uh, uh, or you are trying to update many many steady variables at once uh, my suggestion is to have a look at other hooks uh, there are uh, use reducer and especially use callback hooks uh, that uh, um, that also depend on another a third one which is called the use memo uh, that are used to sort of store uh, information and so you can uh, or can consolidate different changes to a single state variable in a synchronous way so in a way you are not setting changing the state synchronously and creating a loop but uh, delegating to some asynchronous behavior and uh, the change of the state and also the memory of uh, of the previous values hmm? okay we are, we are not uh, we don't want to go into too deep into this uh, they are not uh, so complex to, to use or to, or to learn but if you find yourself that you're struggling with the management of the state uh, inside effects uh, uh, maybe have a look at this uh, at the documentation of these uh, hooks um, and uh, there's also another fine point uh, which is uh, when inside the hook function you are calling another function 
the identity of those external function is also a dependency uh, we are in javascript functions are variables like all the other variables so they are mutable the same identifier can refer to different functions at different times or every time you enter into a function the function the nested function will be redefined or recreated from scratch and so you need to uh, specify the dependency uh, so that the method can be called again um, so uh, the the general rule to avoid this which is a, a very tricky is try to have functions outside the component or inside the rendering method in this way you have no problems because this, if the function are outside the component they cannot be affected by the rendering they cannot change because they are defined statically hoisted in the in the global scope of the of the component of the, sorry of the module or inside the rendering function so they will become local and you uh, they will be recreated every time and you don't need to list them as dependencies hmm? because uh, it they are you you are sure that they will be always the same because you are creating them inside the effect um, in, a, in other cases uh, see this you, you use callback uh, is trying to, to 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 delegate the calling of the function and the uh, and the um, memorization of the result of the function to a, to a separate hook mm. so these are um, fine details that you may you may found uh, but usually try the, the, the simple rule is try not to call other functions defined inside the component from uh, an, uh, an effect use only functions defined outside the component or inside the hook itself in this case you are safe in all the other cases there's nothing bad there's nothing wrong but you need to think and be very aware of what are the dependencies of your functions also transitive dependencies a function that calls another function that calls another function that uses a property well that property in the end of the chain must be listed as a dependency of the first one that's why if the, the function that we are calling is inside the same component is easier to see which values they are using and if it's in a different file or some somewhere else uh, it's more difficult to understand what are the real values that are affecting the computation of this function mm -hmm. so there's nothing complex here it's just to be very very careful about uh, the code that we are executing mm -hmm. um, here we have an example of a classical usage of a, of a use state uh, use effect uh, uh, hook um, where we are loading some data synchronously uh, when the component is mounted so for example we are loading a url and uh, we are changing uh, some state uh, is loading that will of course uh, show some sort of loading indicator in the user interface and uh, uh, you see that the, the dependency is only in a url uh, because maybe we want the component to be able to re-update itself and fetch new data when this url changes and url of course in order to change is part of the state so we're saying okay initially this component will fetch data from this address but then on some click on some selection uh, if you are set url you have a calling set url you are changing this state variable the change of state will uh, trigger the execution of this effect and of course this ex execution is a fetch it's fetching something oh, well, okay right now we are using axios instead of fetch but it's the same uh, and will be asynchronous so we have an await and this effect will uh, in background load the data and when the data is available it will change uh, the um, the date uh, sorry set data will call set data so we'll change the data using the data coming from the result of the url call so using the, the body of the of the request of the response okay so this is normal uh, loading instead of uh, implementing the asynchronous loading in the component did mount method that we did with class components we are creating an effect hook and we are being also more explicit about when to recreate the information when to recall that instead of only at mount time we are calling this at mount time and every time this state changes if we need to do that of course
so in a way uh, user effect uh, is, is, is more difficult because we need to be very careful about uh, uh, how we call it and what is in the array and uh, what uh, uh, when when the different parts of the functions are called or not okay uh, something is going to become uh, uh, easier uh, because also react uh, is, uh, is developing new new kind of api there's a new suspense api which will be delivered probably next year and it will uh, um, uh, simplify very much the fetching of asynchronous data by wrapping that into a new type of component okay but for for the moment uh, uh, we need to be careful um, with what we are doing inside this side effect in a way everything is managed uh, um, in a functional way by react except what we put inside our effects our effects are procedural code imperative code in a functional uh, universe and so of course we are now in a way not breaking the rules but running outside the rules and that's why we need to be careful with what we are doing to be consistent with the overall behavior of the application given by react Okay, so these are some of the things that we can do with hooks, but how do they work? So this was my first question when we started them. Okay, how can they work practically? My question was here, for the first example, uh, there should be some magic because I'm calling a function that inside uh, calls uh, three other, three times the same use state function. Okay, uh, nothing strange with that. But the problem is that when I call this function a second time, I'm recalling use state that usually should, uh, from, from this syntax, uh, they should uh, return a new value. This hit, then this count, this mod, look like they should be new variables every time we call them. How can this value persist? This was my first question. My second question is, uh, well, these are identical calls. How can they create different variables? Every time we call it, it creates a, a, a new state, or but they are exactly the same call. If I call you state zero with the number three times, I'm creating three different variables. Hmm? So how does it work? Well, actually, there is some uh, magic, of course, behind that. Uh, and uh, what happens is that with hooks, uh, uh, every uh, function that we use as a component as some sort of uh, slots uh, some uh, s extra space in which they store hooks so this example function imagine that these are some so hidden somewhere some drawers in which to store the hooks that we define and these slots are filled in order so every time you call a hook uh, it will use a new slot and this lot is not associated with the function call but with the function itself hmm? with the function object not with the current call of this object so when i call use state here for for the first time it's using the first hook uh, the first uh, uh, say slot as i called it and attaching to the first lot of the function example this uh, state variable when i call the use state here the second time i'm occupying the second slot of this function and so on even when the function ends the is not the function is not destroyed the function is still there and these slots are st still remember what you put into them when you call the function a second time we will reuse the same slots so the first version will match to the first lot that in this case the first lot will not be empty anymore will not be new and so i'm just reusing what was already put there before if i can make a comparison is like having static members in a class okay some uh, values that are stored inside the class and not inside the instances <clears throat> of course here we don't have classes we don't have instances we just have functions and function calls but the idea is the same we are storing something in the function definition and not uh, inside the scope of a single function call 
this is how it works and uh, uh, we are matching the position of the slots uh, inside the function with uh, a given variable in this case we are using only states but it can be uh, context it can be effects and and and, uh, and more um, a given variable given by the user and so we must be careful that the same slot will always be used by the same variable what happens if i swap the first and the second i risking of using the, the slot for the inner variable to store the count and vice versa so in a way uh, we must help react to know or not to know but don't 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 care about it or don't be in influenced by which uh, uh, which which uh, slots are occupied by which hook so in a way uh, react by must be you by must be helped with two rules one react must know which functions uh, must have these slots to which functions does react need to add the slots not every function in javascript we are not transforming the way functions are working only on some specific functions we will need uh, to apply this transformation of giving this uh, uh, hook slots uh, to the function itself and second in order to occupy the slots uh, all the hooks in any function call must always be called uh, in the same order so we, it's, it's not allowed to call these three in a different order in the same function so that uh, the, the the correspondence between the hook and the slot will be always the same every time the function is called these two rules uh, translate uh, into some syntax rules mm. uh, these syntax rules are called the hook rules uh, the hook rules uh, that are specifically mentioned in the documentation and uh, if we follow these two rules then all the hooks mechanisms uh, work uh, and we don't need to be aware of the details okay we are trying now just now to understand what is happening behind the scenes but we don't need to uh, really understand it for using hooks just for having a better understanding and uh, for this mechanism to work correctly we must uh, always follow these two rules one only call hooks at the top level of a function so never call a hook inside a if inside a for statement inside a try catch block or whatever else because uh, you must be sure that the that every time you call the functions every time you call the function uh, the same hooks will be called always in the same order you cannot skip one you cannot call any hook uh, uh, twice or you cannot change the order there should be no invocation of the function in which uh, um, some hooks is uh, skipped for example if I am skipping the first one yeah in some execution because in some if uh, something i don't need uh, to use uh, the hidden state then what will happen is that uh, the count uh, hook uh, will uh, match with the first slot uh, that contain the hidden state so we are, i'm creating a mess i'm creating a lot of confusion so no hook function should be called inside the statement only at the top level of the statement it's better if it's at the beginning of the function so that they are, they are all executed unconditionally okay first rule second rule uh, i cannot call hooks for from any functions javascript function because not all javascript functions have uh, um, have slots have this kind of slots managed by react so i only can i can only so hooks cannot be called for normal function can only be called from two diff, two specific types of functions one function components which what is what we did up to up to now we called the uh, hooks from functional components react components or from other hooks so every hook can call other hooks because our hook functions are uh, managed in, in the same way um, even custom hooks so if you are implementing a new type of hook uh, then you can inside it uh, call other hooks uh, so that you are creating a more complex hook uh, starting from the simplest ones okay 
uh, we have an example here of the mechanism of how um, four different e hooks uh, we state this effect and you state this effect inside a function they are called in a given order and what happens at the first render and what happens in the second render in this first render you see that uh, uh, the the hook manager is is blind it doesn't see the function it only sees the calls and the order in which this happens this happens so the first time uh, we uh, see a use state and so we initialize the first slot uh, with a state variable then we see a use effect and we initialize the second effect uh, the second slot with an effect with the effect function and uh, that in this case is we will be this function here persist form the third slot will be occupied by a new state and the fourth slot will be occupied by another effect so this function in this case so we are populating the slots in the second render we will find the slots that are already occupied uh, in the case of use state we don't uh, modify anything we just return the state variable and the setting function that were already stored into the slot and same for the third one we are just re returning the surname and certain name that were created in the first render so in the first rendering we are creating the state in the second render and all the other renders uh, after that uh, we are um, attaching to that previous uh, state um, for the effects uh, uh, practically every time the effect is replaced uh, uh, with a new with a new function but in any case it's always the same function so we'll be we are replacing with something which is identical to what we had before mm. but we are not creating a new one we are not adding new ones we are just replacing existing ones so we we need to recognize that we are reusing the same slots as before this is the basic mechanism for which the the the, the hook magics uh, it's, are working behind the scenes but we don't need to be aware or to reason every time about this internal mechanism because uh, uh, this syntax rules uh, guarantees us that uh, we are not doing any pro any any errors we are not calling hooks uh, in the wrong way uh, by the way i mentioned custom hooks uh, before and this means that you can create uh, your own hooks uh, in a very simple way basically so you just have to create uh, a function uh and uh, and uh, mm, give it a good name mm, use something so you can you should uh, uh, follow the naming conventions for hooks uh, and this can be used inside your components uh, uh, as hooks uh, you can um, uh, decide you are totally free ab about uh, what com what uh, parameters your hook uh, will use uh, you are totally free about what uh, results uh, your hook uh, will use mm. so just uh, by defining a function and uh, starting the name with use and then if you want uh, calling other hooks uh, inside your function because you, it's, uh, it will probably be needed uh, because otherwise uh, you will be just uh, uh, defining some external helper function um, you can uh, uh, extract into a hook uh, some some logic uh, uh, that you can reuse in many different components mm. so the good part of hooks is that you try to define them in a way that can be reused by different components and can add some behavior to other components uh, even if they are just uh, simple function components and the good part is that every time you call a different hook uh, you are creating uh, a new instance of the state a new instance of the function and so on so you can reuse the same code but every time in every function that creates the hook uh, that uses the hook and so creates the, the state or the or the function will receive its own copy of the data its own copy of the functions and um, and uh, uh, they are they are not uh, sharing the same state so for example remember the binding no? in class components we are binding a function to work only with that class this doesn't happen with hooks because they are just simple functions every time you call the hook it will create a fresh set of information for you but if we want we can exchange some information by attaching that to the function hmm? and uh, and pass it around its parameters and so on so it can become 
Mm, so the idea of hooks was quite simple at the beginning, but very, very powerful. And it allows us to create many, many different uh, uh, programming patterns uh, that are uh, using the same basic mechanism. Uh, I just want to briefly show an example without going into detail of uh, some uh, new hook uh, that we were defined in, the, in this article. Uh, for example, I'm defining a function called useDataAPI. Hmm? Uh, and uh, in this case, this function will, will take two parameters, okay, the initial address and the initial data, and will return an array of two components. The first component is an object and the second component is a function, set URL. Um, and uh, basically it's, uh, it's a wrapping of the, of the normal uh, data loading that we have uh, in, the, in, the, um, in the beginning of the components life cycle. Um, and that will, uh, so that we can manage in a consistent way the managing of errors, for example, of the loading indicators and so on. If we want to replicate the same logic in many components, uh, it may be worthwhile to uh, say separate that into a function because we want all the fun all the components to behave in this way. So they use the same hook, and this hook will provide a mechanism, for example, for loading, uh, changing the URL, so the loading new data, and when new data is loaded, uh, is loading becomes true, and when the some error is error becomes true. And when the data is finished is loading becomes false again and the data will be available and so on so these are the return values of this hook and you see that this hook instead uses states it uses effects uh, normally and this uh, on the right hand side we have the user of this hook so we are justifying there's nothing special here we are defining a function we call it use something and we use ins inside the function body we use uh, hooks we are returning something and what we are returning will be used by our caller so this is a normal function component the app that uh, calls this hook use the api with an initial url um, initial data is passed here as an empty object or an object with an empty array and this data is loading in error will be used inside the um, inside the, um, the components so in the rendering for example they're not shown here but uh, they may be may, maybe if uh, if is loading is uh, is true then we are not showing something we are showing a, a spinner or some other effect and uh, the the function because here set url now here the client called it do fetch which is exactly the same function okay we are returning a value that is renamed here do fetch and it's called into event handler so this do fetch here is actually calling set url here for this specific uh, data api if you are you may use reuse this hook in a different function in a different component and it will have a different set of uh, of data a different a different value of the url and so on so in some way we are simplifying into one call uh, a set of operations that may be uh, we all we want uh, uh, to do in the same way for all our components uh, and with a sort of uh, uh, uniform interface mm? so it's something that has every new concept it takes a while uh, to, to to master to to see what is happening uh, uh, so that's uh, what i am suggesting you to go for, with small steps if you want to try maybe to something simple like use states uh, and then maybe try to use some effects uh, if you need them if you want to try them uh, and uh, and only later on when you understand the real mechanics uh, maybe try to, to to dig into or to study uh, custom components uh, by the way it looks like the the reactor uh, ecosystem is uh, investing a lot into hooks uh, and um, and in fact they were very well received by by uh, by the community and so that you, you see that other libraries for example the react router that we saw uh, as a, a library of components uh, uh, also defines uh, if you see the, the documentation some hooks uh, use history use location use parameters use route match uh, for accessing inside the function some information about the current routes uh, and, uh, and also route match uh, used also to, to do the matching inside functional components instead of uh, of having to wrap everything 
into um, into a route uh, component mm. so in many other libraries they're trying to provide same or similar functionalities that were available in components or in classes they're trying to provide it also in hooks and uh, and also they're trying to um, to manage better all the asynchronous operation especially the fetching because it's still the most critical one because you're only interacting with the center of the world um, and the, all the loading and not, not loading indicators and so on will be probably uh, in, engineered in a very in, in the much simpler um, com type of component which uh, is in the development is called the suspense so it's uh, everything is still really under development the hooks uh, is less than one year that they were they were uh, six months that they were built that they were declared stable but a lot of libraries are already and a lot of applications are already using them first of all because they are shorter in syntax they're simpler to use in simple use cases but they can become complex they can become uh, powerful uh, if we uh, if we use them in a more sophisticated ways so if you want uh, you can you, we have today just started and to scratch the, the the surface of hooks uh, and so we can have uh, some experimentation with simple ones and if you want uh, some study of the other com more complex ones uh, thank you and uh, goodbye